There will be days where you smell normal and then days where you reek of truffles. Mushroom, mushroom soup. You are a truffle pig. <laughs> If you're new to the podcast, you'll understand that a lot of the podcast focuses around our bowel movements. So a lot of the stories that get sent in are a lot about bowel movements. Mm. Jamie, you keep picking on Sophie and trying to out her for clearly terrible bowel-related stories. The story I'm about to retell is the benchmark of all poo stories. Yes. And I can't imagine anyone can top this nightmare shit situation. I like what she did there. So last summer, we were at my family holiday in a delightful seaside town. I spent the summer eating, drinking, partying, ignoring my IBS and stomach issues. Lol. Oh, I was terribly smug. I was not bloated, no aches, no pains. Delightful. Was What a treat. And then I stopped pooping. <laughs> Literally stopped. Seven days passed and it looked like <gasps> I was carrying triplets. On the seventh horrible day, I said enough is enough. And after straining on the loo for probably six hours, I took myself to the local hospital. <laughs> after a four hour wait, my stomach absolutely agony. All was well. They asked what I had been eating and I replied a staple diet of mussels, white wine and lemon posset. The, what was lemon posset? The nurse lemon was loose. like, babe, please, your poor tum. After a few checks, I decided I needed some help to poop. Pooping three suppositories up my old bum sent me on my way. The wait had been lengthy and I got into the car back to the holiday home around midnight. As I drove, my stomach was bubbling volcano, roaring, shouting and rumbling. I was five minutes from the house when suddenly my stomach was ready to abort all the sins of summer <laughs> through the back exit. <laughs> my eyes were watering, my hands clutching the steering wheel. I could take it no more. I would not shit myself in my car. <laughs> I feel you. I pulled over the road, running alongside a very quiet beach. No one around, silence, perfect for a poo crime. I knew what I needed to do. I grabbed some napkins from the takeout packages, left my car and headed to the beach. I dug a little hole and let all hell break loose. The world fell out of me. I was literally three stone light in one second. I Gorgeous. covered the hole and vowed to never speak of this. I had a shower, went to bed, revived. The next day, I woke up to a beautiful new day. Empty stomach and empty bowel, sensational. Headed to the kitchen and my dad and mum and boyfriend were shaking their heads at something on the laptop. What is it? I asked. Oh, no. There on the screen was a picture of a Labrador dog covered, covered in what was, what was clearly shit on the local area's Facebook page. No. I nearly died and felt the colour drain from my face. <gasps> it's Penny's dog. Apparently, someone has taken a crap on the beach and the poor Becky dog had dug it up and eaten it. <laughs> What is wrong with people? Said my dad, shaking his head. <laughs> I joined in with the slander and stay quiet. I saw Becky Dog around the village and gave her a little nod of solidarity. <laughs> <laughs> my shit is famous. So Sophie, unless you've done a big shit on a beach and dog is eating it and then been talked about on Facebook, you have no worries. I Please love you. keep anonymous. That is genius. Isn't that genius? Not the dog being oh on the Facebook. I thought she was going to say that it was filmed on Facebook. Like someone had uploaded her with her butt hanging <laughs> over like this grass and she had just been shitting everywhere. Do you remember one of the stories that we had where they had a photo booth at a wedding and, the, and one of the, one of the uh, guests had taken, she had lifted up her skirt and showed it to... Oh, the, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. One of the guests had shown her bottom to the photo booth. Anyway, the photos went round everyone and she didn't realise that her bum hole was showing. No, but it wasn't. She has shit stains all over. No, she, it was her bum hole. She wasn't wearing any pants. Why she would she do that? I don't get it. Okay. Right, so do you have a listener's message? Okay, I've got such a good message. Okay, so this is from Rosie and it's all about why we need to know everything we know about photographers at weddings and why we need to be really sure who we're picking okay you ready for this i'm ready dear sophie and jamie i was a bridesmaid at my dad's wedding earlier this month for context my dad is deaf and is in a popular and is popular in the deaf community so when they realized that the videographer they hired didn't take photos shock horror they called in a favor from one of my dad's friends who was a keen photographer the photographer was more than happy to help out his good friends for the day and so the panic was over Anyway, as the ceremony was taking place, the photographer was doing a great job snapping photos whilst remaining crouched down and undetected. However, just as my dad and stepmom were saying their vows, the photographer was crouched down next to me taking photos <laughs> and it was at this moment he decided to let out a noisy fart. The poor guy was also deaf and had no idea that his fart had disturbed half of the church. 
All the other bridesmaids turned around and asked if I was the one who'd farted. I was mortified <laughs> and told them it was the photographer and none of us could hold in our giggles. The poor guy continued taking photos, completely oblivious to the fact that half the guests had heard his fart until he turned around <laughs> and saw everyone giggling. At first he looked confused at why everyone was giggling, but it didn't take him long to put the pieces together and he looked so embarrassed. I felt a bit bad for him then, but then I could can't also can't understand why he wouldn't just hold it for 10 more minutes <laughs> till the ceremony was over. Oh that my is- God, that is brilliant. Oh, that is brilliant. what if it was like he thought it was going to be a sign in on it? Oh. <laughs> I had, a, I had a friend of mine who went to a pub and went to get a drink from a bar. Oh, no. And there was two people at the bar. One was a stranger. The other person was Hugh Grant. And he was like, oh, my God, it's Hugh Grant. Didn't say anything. Went and ordered his drink at the bar. Anyway, the, the guy on the left left. Anyway, there was suddenly a terrible smell. And Hugh Grant turned to my friend and went, oh, have you farted? <laughs> He said, no, it wasn't me. It was a guy who left. <laughs> had he farted? <laughs> no, he hadn't farted. But Hugh Grant thought it was <laughs> Sophie has been saying to me recently that every single time you come close to me, I smell of truffles. Mm-hmm. So explain this. Right. I- this happened in lockdown. Jamie started smelling it. It started when you did Strictly Come Dancing because I remember thinking there's you must be cooking truffles in the Strictly Come Dancing building. Uh-huh. And it can... It, it comes, it comes in drips and drabs. There will be days where you smell normal and then days where you reek of truffles. Mushroom, mushroom soup. And the, <laughs> I thought I have a very sensitive nose, which is true, I do. But then I thought I must be smelling something that isn't quite right and my nose is deceiving me. Then Melissa, in walk she comes. And in walk she comes? Walks in, she comes. Yoda, what's going on? Anyway, she goes, hi, gives a mug. She goes, oh, smell like truffles. And I was like, <gasps> confirmed. You are a truffle pig. <laughs> I don't know. I can't believe that I actually You're stink. snuffling around for truffles day and night. <laughs> so you think... That is it. If you, you could be an animal, you're a truffle pig. So you think at night time, we go to sleep and I then I wake up. Instead of going to save lives... You put and being on your su- truffle suit. I, I become a truffle pig and I go searching for truffles. Get on your all fours, put a snout on <laughs> and you go into the truffle fields. Sure of it. Put a snout on. Not sharing those truffles, that's for sure. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, there's apparently a um, reason. Oh no! Why fungi, s- fungi. I know. Why it's- smell oh, no! of truffles? There's apparently a reason why I smell of truffles that are it's bacteria. Producers just sent to us. Um, Androstenol is one of a family of steroids formed as a natural byproduct of testosterone, the so-called male hormone. It's responsible for the slightly musky cell smell that men naturally have, and it's one of the components of truffles. So I just have lots of testosterone reeking out. The f? That is why. What the fuck? I have just loads. Of, I'm a. That's wild. I'm a fucking man. I'm a fucking man. I'm full of it. I knew it. <laughs> Woo! Oh yeah! Drink that up, girl. You want some testosterone over here? Because I got. Shitloads of it. What the hell? What's that smell? The smell of man. <laughs> <laughs> you want to smell it? Smell that. <laughs> you want it? When you have a little soup, you want a soup of testosterone? I got plenty of it. <laughs> you can drink it up. What the? That's wild. That's wild. I have My of- nose. Sorry, I can smell <laughs> pheromones. What we should take away from that is I have a supersonic nose. What I take away from it is that you're bizarre and I'm a man. I knew I was manly. I have a magic power, right? My nose can sniff things out like nobody's business. <laughs> so well done. You're basically a hound. I am a hound. <laughs> what the frig? What the frig? You're a sweaty old musky man. <sighs> I tell you what. Oh, God. 